All right, welcome to Old World Gaming. Um, Warhammer Community has dropped a couple of um, new articles today. Um, Rumor Engine, which looks like um, a Sister of Battle icon on a ruined building. Mm, not particularly interested about that. What I am interested in, though, is this. Old World Almanac. Designer's notes on the FAQ and Errata. So, let's have a look and see what they've said. Uh, Warhammer the Old World has been out for just over two months. It's April now. When did it come out? January? January, February, March, April. Yeah, I guess. End of January, beginning of April. It's just over two months. Almost three. Uh, it's safe to say it's been a great success, which is good. I'm really pleased. Actually, lots of people, um, there, there's lots of people playing games. I'm enjoying playing games. There's um, some people locally playing games. So, yeah, yeah, I think it has been a good success. And I'm very, very pleased about that. Um, so I love Old World. It's definitely, it's, yeah, one of my favorite Games Workshop games up there with Blood Bowl and Warhammer Quest. I think probably Old World is my favorite. Um, now that people have had a chance to get to grips with quite a complex set of rules, team have released their first set of community-driven FAQs for the core rules, forces of fantasy and revenue hordes, on top of some corrections to errors, errors in the legacy PDFs, all of which you can download below. Here's what the team has to say. Are they going to call out what the, uh, what the errors are in the legacy PDFs, or do you just have to go and look through them and see if you can spot them? Let's find out. Uh, this past weekend heralded the release of the third arcane journal, giving the orc and goblin tribes two exciting new armies of infamy, two special characters, several new units, and loads more brand new content. I haven't managed to get hold of one yet, um, but I would like to get the arcane journal for orcs and goblins. I think I should probably pick up the um, Bretonian and, and Kemri one as well, actually. Um, but it's just a case of, uh, of getting around to them. Um, along with full army lists for the nine core factions uh, and legacy rules seven more. That's a lot of content released in a short amount of time for a brand new game and a lot of players to get to grips with. It's true, it is a lot of stuff. Um, yeah, I don't know how quickly they normally release rules for new um, new games. Like, I guess new additions. It'll it'll be quite a drip feed. So. Like the closest, uh, I I didn't I wasn't really aware of how they were doing the Age of Sigma one. I guess they did like a, a basic rule set for every every army at the time. I can't really remember. Sixth edition, they did the Ravening Hordes um, paperback that you got in White Dwarf. I think pretty sure it came in a White Dwarf, um, and you could probably even pick it up for free from your local Games Workshop at the time back in 2000. Um, so they did. So that was the closest that I can think of. But even then, these have been, this is a much kind of, this has been a much bigger um, uh, set of rules released, I think, than even 6th um, edition. Um, as with any newly released game, we've had plenty of questions from players, and we'd like to say a big thank you to anyone, everyone who's taken time to get in touch. We've generally enjoyed receiving feedback via the Old World FAQ inbox. Now, I didn't know that was a thing. Um, so if you've seen my chaos, uh, was it the chaos one? Yeah, the chaos video I did uh, a couple of days ago. I mentioned that I um, emailed off to uh, uh, to the Games Workshop, just the customer services email address, and they told me they. Uh, so I, I've recorded a video last night, which I haven't uploaded yet. I was going to upload it, and then then I saw this had dropped. Um, so in that, I, I talk about the response, um, but I'll kind of briefly cover it here again. But they they essentially said. Um, that they couldn't help on the customer service team would pass over to the old world team um, for a future FAQ. And the irony is today an FAQ drops. So <laughs> I doubt I doubt my question, my question has made it into this FAQ because I've asked it. If it's in there, it's because other people have asked it. Um, but that amuses me um, the day after I day after I ask it and they drop an FAQ. Like it was on purpose, but it 100% wasn't. Um, okay, armed with your questions, we've updated the initial Old World FAQ document, which I did read and have completely forgotten what it said and have not referenced it since, um, which included a combination of questions that designers and place test testers anticipated would come up. I recall actually reading through the FAQ and thinking these are all basically just clarifications on rules that are sensible to me and I would have read it that way anyway. So maybe that's why I haven't thought about it. 
I don't know. Uh, and added two more, one for Ravening Hordes and one for Forces of Fancy. Okay, so they FAQ'd both the books. Both of these incorporate incorporate the relevant arcane journals. Okay. In all of these, we've addressed the questions asked most often and where appropriate, added commentary in order to add clarity. Cool. We've also taken the opportunity to make a few adjustments in the form of errata. For example, we've amended some of the universal special rules. Hmm, interesting. Making it more clear on how they interact with units and characters. Um, okay, cool. Finally, we've updated the legacy army lists, strictly in order to correct some errors that had crept in when we wrote them. If you're using one of those, please make sure you have the most up-to-date version downloaded. Um, yeah, what what I'll be most interested to see is if they if they give like a list of all the things they've updated, rather than you having to, to download them all and go through and see if you can spot them. But we'll have to find out. What we have not done is make any significant changes to gameplay or army lists. We feel that at this time Warhammer the Old World is just too new. Yep, sounds good to me. People are still learning the rules. I mean, it's literally, they just said it's two months, so there's no need to change anything yet. People are still learning the rules, forming strategies and mastering their tactics. Further updates and errata might be required in the future, but right now we're happy with the gameplay experience and happy that the different factions each present a unique challenge. And I think that's fair. I wouldn't expect them to change any rules for a long time unless there was something particularly broken. But even then, something may seem broken uh, until you play with it a whole bunch and people start countering it. So I I, I wouldn't expect them to, to change anything for, for a year or so, really, realistically. Thanks, guys. Click the button below to get the downloads below. <laughs> I think it's above. Um, there's more good news for fans of the old world. Fans of the World of Legends, French and German translations for the three current arcane journals will be available from the Warhammer web store very soon. There we go. But yes, it looks like they're referring to this button here. Okay. Uh, looking for the latest updates to your Codex of Battletome. Got a question about how something in your army works. Each of these FAQs contains all of the most up-to-date errata and answers you'll need to make sure that your games run as smoothly as possible, incorporating feedback from the Warhammer community, the playtesters, and, of course, our studio design team. Cool. Key downloads. One. So what have we got? Warhammer the Old World rulebook. I assume that's an FAQ rather than actually the rulebook. Um, FAQs and... <laughs> I feel like that should say FAQ. Um, Ravening Hordes, Forces of Fantasy, and then each of these have got a 9th of April uh, version. What are these? Guide to Building Metal Kits. Oh, interesting. Fine. Oh, didn't know that existed. Um, I probably, yeah, probably saw it. Okay, let's start with the, the rules and see what we've got here. You can see that my internet speed clearly is amazing. Um, there we go. That's all I have to say about that. But at least we can see it's not going to take much longer. <laughs> you can mock me, mock me in the comments, how appalling my internet speed is. This is why I don't do uh, don't do live streaming at the moment. Okay. Warhammer the Old World FAQ version 1.1. Uh, so you know what? I'm going to start at the top. It's been a while since I read it, and let's uh, let's zoom in a bit. Um, this document collects amendments. I assume the first one was 1.0. Um, this document collects amendments to the rules contained in the Warhammer Old World rulebook, presents our responses to players' frequently asked questions. As this document is revised regularly, it has a version number, where a version number has a letter, e.g. 1.1a. This means it has had a local amendment only in one language to clarify translation translation issue. When this document is revised in full, the num version number will be incremented. Okay, so 1.1a just means like in French or German as I just pointed out um, something was hard to understand so they updated it whereas 1.1 as this is is everyone got an update. Below you'll find errata to the Warhammer the Old World rulebook. Errata. When this document is revised updated entries will be highlighted in blue while entirely new editions will be highlighted in magenta. Update. Are there any blue ones? There's a blue one. Okay, fine. So we'll see some blue ones. So I assume black is the stuff that was in version one. Um, blue is the stuff that was in version one that they've changed. Uh, and then pink or magenta uh, is brand new for this for this one. That's how I'm reading that anyway. Uh, errata marked with an asterisk 
have been corrected in a later printing of the publication and may not apply. What does that even mean? It's, uh, it's been corrected in later printing. Oh, okay, fine. So, if there's anything with an asterisk, so... Um, I wonder if there are any. Uh, no, there may not be any on here. That's an example. It doesn't look like it. Um, but I'm taking that to mean that um, when you read the, the rule book, because these are all the rulebook ones, um, you'll find, oh no, it'll only be the errata actually, rather than FAQs. Okay, so in the next time they print the rulebook, they will update the rulebook to, so to change the first sentence, for example, on this one. Um, and when they do an FAQ following that reprinting, this will have a star next to it to say, if you've got a later rulebook, your rulebook will already say this because we changed it. Um, whereas if you've got an early rulebook, like me and any of you who've already got a rulebook, uh, this is, is relevant because you won't know it yet. But in future rulebooks, they'll ha they will change the first sentence. They'll put a star next to it to say, yeah, new newer versions of the rulebook already have this change in it. All right, let's have a look. So combat result bonus. Change the entries followed change the entries whilst in combat order a close close order formation with a unit strength of five or more and a claim a bonus of plus one point what does it say at the moment now i'm gonna to have to go and look right let's see you know what uh i've not i've not done this before this way around let's see if i can add my uh add my camera in whilst i'm recording my screen and, uh, and share the experience of looking through the rulebook together. Let's see, uh, see how we get on. You have to bear with me one second while I just set my camera up. Move my, my keyboard out of the way. Do I need to move my keyboard out of the way? Who knows? Right, let's put this, put this here and let's find a uh, camera. Movie recording. Here we go. We have a camera. Beautiful. Okay. Um, let's pop that there for a second. And let's grab a rule book. See, that that wasn't so bad, was it? I definitely, uh, definitely could have been worse. Okay, so here's my rule book. Uh, what are we? Page 101. Is this... I feel like this is probably just changing the unit strength. Um... Or, or putting a unit strength in. So now, what's this? Whilst in combat order, a close order formation with a unit strength of five. I reckon that's probably what it is. Um, so, uh, page 101. Um, combat order, blah, blah, blah. Um, <laughs> if a unit in close order formation is wide enough, claim rank bonus. Uh, okay, interesting. Wait. What am I looking for? Combat order, a combat result bonus. Whilst in combat order, close order formation, may claim a bonus of plus one combat result point. So, that's to stop you, I guess, uh, having just like a lone random guy left, or a couple of guys left, um, to gain the plus one combat result. Unit strength of five or more. But that still means that, like, um, I feel like there's some monsters that have got close orders, so they still get their plus one, generally. All right, fine. I probably won't flick for the rulebook for all of these, but just ones that I'm not particularly familiar with. Um, heavy casualties. Change the first paragraph as follows. If during any single phase other than the combat phase, a unit loses more than a quarter, 25% of, of the models it contained at the start of the phase, it must take a panic test. I feel like that already said that because I definitely, I remember checking that out myself um, and it, it said it doesn't matter for the combat phase, but there we go. Um, chariot runners change first sentence of the rule to friendly models whose troop type is chariot can draw a line of sight over or through the models with this special rule and can move through friendly units if they're on skirmish formation and if the majority of models have this special rule. I imagine that's to do with the majority of models. I've not, I've not come across any um, situations yet where I... Uh, want to use chariot runners, but you can move through. I mean, actually, that's one of the good things about going through this FAQ. Um, it gets me to read rules that I've not actually encountered yet. Um, so chariots can draw a line of sight over or through models with chariot runner rule. 
can move through friendly units if they are in skirmish formation. And the majority of models have this special rule. And it's pretty cool. Um, I uh, like I say, I have not had, not really come across any um, armies yet where uh, I want to do that. Um, but there we go. Good to know. Um, change the first sentence of the rule to once per turn when a unit in which the majority of models have this special rule is declared the target during the enemy shooting phase, that unit may choose to fall back in good order, fleeing directly away from the enemy unit shooting at it. And I assume is yeah, uh, is declared the target. Once per turn, when a unit is declared the target, they may choose to fall back in good order, fleeing directly away from the enemy unit shooting at it. Um, I'm not quite sure what the, the clarification is. I could look it up, but I imagine it's to do with um, either which direction or when because it's when you're declared the target so you can run away before they shoot or which direction. So that would be my guess there. Fire and flee. If the majority of the models in a unit armed with missile weapons have the special rule, you may declare that it will fire and flee as a charge reaction. So I guess I gather it's around what if some some models in the unit don't have the fire and flee. So I guess if you put a character in there and he doesn't have fire and flee, um, but if the majority of the models... That's probably what a lot of these are, isn't it? Is around... Um, uh, yeah, majority of models in, have this special rule. Um, majority of the models, okay, so this is around putting characters in actually, isn't it? Um, I imagine a bunch of you already knew that. Okay, random movement. When a model with this special rule moves, roll the dice to determine its maximum movement when it moves. So, what about if you need to check movement when it doesn't move? I don't know. Um, but fine. I'm not quite sure what that's clarifying, but sure, here we go. We're in a model with the special rules. What does it say? I mean, random movement, uh, I am actually very interested in random movement uh, on account of uh, squigs. <laughs> Basically, that's the short answer, the, the one word answer, squigs. Um, random movement, which paragraph did it say we're changing? Uh, the third sentence, when a model with a special rule moves, Roll the dice to determine its maximum movement. Okay, fine. What does it say at the moment? Third sentence. Uh, whenever a model with a special rule moves, for any reason, roll the dice to determine how far it must move. <gasps> Wait. To determine its maximum movement. Whoa. Okay. Okay. Now that is interesting. Because I've definitely been in situations where I rolled my rolled my movement. I was like, do I have to move the full movement? So this said, so this is actually, this is a legitimate change. Um, so rather than, um, rather than just being, uh, rather than clearing up, this is an actual change. Whenever a model with this special rule moves, roll the dice to determine how far it must move. Now it's maximum movement, so it can move less. Now that was definitely worth looking up because I probably wouldn't have spotted that. Um, that is very good to know. So if I want to, I don't know, if I don't know, stay out of shooting range or what I think is charge range or something like that, I can do. I don't have to just go charging straight in uh, or all the way. That is very good to know. I can't remember the scenarios I had. But I've definitely had at least one, maybe two times where I'm like, oh, I don't really want to move that full distance. Um, so that is very cool. OK, approved. Reserve move. Change the first sentence of the rule to unless it charged, marched or fled during the movement phase, a unit in which the majority of the models have this special rule uh, may make a... Wait, I'm not following the way that that should be said. Unless it charged, marched or fled during the movement phase. A unit in which the majority of the models have this special rule, reserve move. A unit in which the majority of the models have this special rule may make a reserve move at the end of the shooting phase after all shooting has been resolved. Okay, so it's putting characters in a, in a unit and the, the unit can still move. I actually don't know which units have that because I really like the, like the idea of that, but I haven't found any units. But then I just probably haven't been looking at the... The right armies, yeah. I haven't looked at Wood Elves. I feel like that Wood Elves will have that kind of thing on them. I just haven't looked at Wood Elves yet. I will. I will need to look at Wood Elves in the not too distant future, I imagine, because I've got a Wood Elf army and I've got enough to do somewhere between 500 and 1,000 points. So I'll definitely get them out to play a game. 
like I say, in the not too distant future. So, uh, yeah, I'll be looking that up. Swift Stride, a unit which consists entirely of models, ooh, with this special rule, increases its maximum possible charge range by three inches. And when it makes a charge flee or pursuit roll, may apply a plus D6 modifier to the result. Plus D6. I don't know why I thought it was. Oh, a charge. Wait. Plus D. I don't know why I thought it was three inches. Um, plus D3. Um, but okay, so I think this is about the character um, joining. Uh, this time a character has to have um, Swift Stride. It's interesting how they've decided which ones which ones characters need to have and which ones they don't need to have. Um, but yeah, there we go. Um, let me just quickly check. 178 is on the next page anyway, so it's not like I need to go looking far for it. Uh, change the Swift Stride rule. Let's see, just in case I am missing something, because I haven't used Swift Stride yet. Um, I feel like I will be with my um, Chaos, maybe. Uh, a unit with a special rule increases maximum possible charge range by three inches. When it makes a charge for the obviously roll, it may apply plus D6 modifier to the result. Yeah, so it's basically, if you've got a character in the unit and doesn't have Swift Stride, then your unit cannot Swift Stride. Fine. Berserker Blade. The word of Berserker Blade is frenzied. I just thought they were. But I thought that, was that not just a... I felt like Berserker Blade gave you Frenzy, isn't that what it does? Um, Berserker Blade, Frenzy, what? The wield of the Berserker Blade is frenzied. I don't understand. Oh, is that the, is that to say, uh, Berserker Blade, Frenzy and Magical Attacks, is that to say that actually it's the, the person holding the sword gets Frenzy and the mount doesn't? I think that was not a particularly good clarification. The because it already says frenzy, um, special rules frenzy, like the wielder of the berserker blade is frenzied. I'm kind of taking that to say that it's just the the character and not his mount. However, <laughs> they should definitely have said that if that's what they're saying. Or are they trying to say that? Um, it doesn't specify here that it gives the character frenzy. I don't know. I don't feel like that's particularly particularly good clarification. Um, are they are they trying to say that some people haven't realised that it's the guy who gets frenzy, not the sword? Or I pff, I don't know. I that clarification doesn't feel particularly clear. Um, Bezazzling Helm, uh, let me know if you disagree. The Bezazzling Helm, add the following to the start of the rule, models whose troop type is infantry or cavalry only. Fine, as opposed to what? What other troop type? Oh, you can't give it to beasts? I'm trying to remember all the troop types now. Um, I feel like everything fits into that, doesn't it? Except for monsters. Who's a monster? A monster. I guess you can get characters who are monsters. Um, again, I haven't really, is the, um, like, no, are there, are there any characters who are monsters? The chariots, wait, does that mean you can't, if you, if you get in a chariot, do you become a, a chariot as your troop type? Troop types, categories of troop type, five categories of troop type, um, it doesn't actually say just there. Uh, models, blah, blah, blah. Oh, I never saw that. This section doesn't. Uh, instead, because carrots uh, fine, interesting. All right. Um, it doesn't list the five main troop types. I was just expecting it to, to list it right here. I realize I'm on a tiny screen, but whatever. Um, infantry. Swarm is a troop type. Cavalry is a troop type. Chariot's a troop type. And monster is a troop type. War machines, are they a troop type? <laughs> That sounds like six. I don't know. Anyway, whatever. Um, but infantry and cavalry only. Fine. Page 344. Dispelling a spell. If the result exceeds the casting roll, the spell is dispelled because the quick reference sheet said something else uh, that you could just meet it to dispel it. So, fine. Good to know. Okay, so frequently asked questions. So these are all things that are additions to the to the book. So the errata, stuff to change in the book. Um Whereas these are uh, people who are asking a question about how to read what the book says. Um, so I don't think we'll need the book for a little bit. Okay. 
So below you'll find our answers to frequently asked questions where possible answers are given immediately followed by further explanations. When this document is revised, updated entries will be highlighted in blue, entirely new additions highlighted in magenta, same deal as before. And no asterisks because these don't go in any books. Um, general principles. If I mark the position of a unit, then proceed to move it before putting it back where it was and moving again. Does this count as a take back? <laughs> sure, define take back. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Is take back a thing? Um, what? <laughs> I've got no page reference <laughs> for take back. If I mark the position of a unit, then proceed to move it before putting it back where it was and moving it again. This kind of, I don't even know. I don't quite understand the context for that question. Um, it would be nice to have a page number if there's if take back is a rule. Is take back a rule? I don't know. Can a unit arrayed in close order or open order formation be one model wide? Yes, if there's only one model left, for sure. Um, and I guess if you want to have like five ranks of one model for whatever reason, um, how does a close order unit uh, of one model act? A close order unit of one, just one model act. Is it still close order formation? Or does it act like a skirmisher? That's interesting. Close order unit always acts as such, even if it only contains a single model. And I guess that's because, like, like I mentioned earlier, I'm pretty sure monsters are close order. I feel like they are. Um, and so, yeah, I don't want to make them skirmishers. Yeah. I'm just going to double check that, actually. Monsters. I feel like monsters are a close order unit. Uh, do, 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 care monsters. Here we go. I'll make this big so you can see what I'm looking at. Um, mm, mm, monsters, does it say here? Oh, it doesn't say in here. Um, I guess. Oh, yeah, here we go. Yes, yes, yes. Creatures still are powerful. Don't know former units, but roam the battlefield on our own. Inspire this. Due to their size, they function as close order units rather than skirmishers. Um, so, uh, so that's to, I guess, the clarity there. Um, is in a few places. One, obviously, you had a regiment of like goblin spearmen. Um, the last guy is still a, a close order unit. Um, he doesn't. <laughs> he uh, he doesn't give you plus one in combat because he's not unit strength five, as was clarified earlier, um, or errated earlier. Um, but also, uh, it means your monster can't. You can't get away with acting like a skirmisher because he is also a close order. So. Okay. Um, does a unit count as being obscured when some of the models within it are behind others? A unit cannot be obscured from the enemy by itself. Yeah, what? <laughs> does a unit count as being obscured when some of the models within it are behind others? You mean just like any regiment? I mean, if these are questions people are submitting, they are quite obscure. Oh, well, not that's not an obscure question. I just read the word obscure while I said that. That's a weird question. Like... Yes. No. <laughs> Does the unit count as being obscured with some of the models within it? Some of the models within the unit are behind other models in the same unit. No, it's not obscured. It's not an obscured unit. Maybe that model's obscured, but you just shoot, shoot the person in front of them. <laughs> then they're not obscured anymore. Uh, if a wizard miscasts and rolls eight or higher on the miscard table, I don't even know what that is. Is it only that wizard that cannot attempt to cast any more spells from end of turn, or is it all wizards in their army? Roll of eight or higher on the miscast table affects all friendly wizards. Good to know. I they haven't actually miscast yet, and we've played quite a few games. Um, but I guess it's only one in 36 chance of miscasting, so yeah, it makes sense. Uh, if a wizard has a magic item or special rule that allows them to re-roll a failed casting roll, can they re-roll a natural one and avoid a miscast? No. Roll of natural double one isn't merely a failed casting roll. It is a miscast. I see. So it's a miscast, not a fail. A failed casting roll, like you need to get an eight plus and you roll a seven, that's a fail. Um, but a double one isn't a fail. It's a miscast. Fine. Okay. Yeah, I can take that. That is good to know, though, because I probably wouldn't have, uh, have noticed the difference um, and may well have tried to, to re-roll. Uh, a miscast. So that is that is good to be clarified. What happens to remain in display? Play spell is already in effect. The wizard that casts it attempts to cast again, ends immediately. Can a model wearing armor or carrying a shield cast a bound spell? Yes. I can't, I'm trying to remember. I feel like that, that was asked recently somewhere, but I can't remember. Can a wizard with a physical attribute that counts as a type of armor, such as Tree Man Ancients, Aboreal armor make casting or dispersals? Yes. 
I feel like that's obvious. While such attributes are as protective as a suit of armor, such models do not wear armor. Yeah, I mean, maybe, I guess it's not obvious, but uh, yeah. Does a wizard that's joining a unit need to be in base contact with an enemy model in, uh, to cast an assailment spell? Do they need to be within the fighting rank? Fine, rank, fine. Wizard declines a challenge, retires from combat. Does their unit does their unit lose the benefits of any self spells the wizard has cast? Ooh, Ooh. interesting. Self spells, fine. Um, interesting. So I was just musing on. Um, oh, perfect. Uh, in my chaos chaos list. Uh, that I want to take um, a sorcerer in a uh, in my unit of knights um, and cast demonic vessel on them to get plus one strength and attack and an extra AP. But look, it's range self. So that I mean that's a good tactic. I'm not going to remind anyone of that tactic <laughs> when I play against them. Um, but challenge the wizard, uh, and then they lose the. Uh, these are the benefits of the spell. That is a great tactic to use. Um, I hope people don't realize that when I play against them, because I definitely don't want them to be doing that to my wizard. Um, I want him to just be buffing my unit and be happy and on his own, left alone. Um, uh, but he d doesn't say he has to be in the fighting rank, though, for it to work, does it? So he can sit in the back of the unit if I want him to. Can you challenge someone who's not in the fighting rank? I don't know. That's a different question. Um, okay, fine. Oh, you know what? It is related. I'm going to quickly look up challenges. Can you challenge someone who's not in the fighting rank? Because then that becomes the counter, right? Is you you put your wizard not in the fighting rank. Um, I assume, assume he doesn't have to be in the fighting rank. Oh, what am I doing? What am I looking? Just looking at random stuff. Uh, it's probably in the character section, isn't it? Um, let's see if there's anything in the combat section. I probably just should have looked. Yeah, there's nothing, nothing here. Um, so let's go to, let's go to characters, which are about here. Right, a little bit before this. Challenges. Here we go. Oh, sorry, forgot to make it big. Big. Okay, challenges. Blah, 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 blah. Issuing a challenge. Only one challenge. The active player. Blah, blah, blah. To issue a challenge, player must nominate an eligible character or champion to be the challenger. To be eligible, the model must be within or adjacent to the fighting rank. Adjacent to the fighting rank? What does adjacent to mean? Adj adjacent to the fighting rank. If you're in the second rank, are you adjacent to the fighting rank? If a player doesn't have an urgent... Uh, yeah. Oh, but wait a minute. Wait a minute. What am I about? You can't target the wizard. I just champion will accept. There we go. Don't care about that anymore. Um, okay. Uh, yeah. If a wizard declines a challenge. Yeah. Well, okay. Just don't decline it with the wizard. Decline it with the champion. Um, or someone else. Cool. Okay. If a unit with the fly X spell. Yeah. I, when I read that, I my mind was like oh clearly they can they can challenge the wizard but it's, that's not how challenges work at least it, it never used to be challenges are, one player can issue a challenge the extra player has the opportunity to, blah, 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 issue, to, must nominate oh wait to oh must nominate oh sorry 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 i okay fine um this doesn't change anything but i was reading that wrong just a second ago to issue a challenge um, to be eligible, they have to be in the fighting rank or adjacent to the fighting rank. Okay, so I still don't know if you can issue a challenge from the second rank. That's not clear. Um, player, the opposing player can nominate an eligible character or champion to accept it. Um, yeah, fine. So uh, yeah, so I can just accept it with someone who's not the wizard, like the champion, for example. Okay, if a unit with fly special rule moves over a magical vortex that counts as dangerous terrain, is it affected by it? Yes, magical vortex are considered tall enough to affect even models that are flying high above the battlefield. There we go. Um, movement. Can a unit? Oh yeah, so these are all movement questions. Can a unit that rallies and reforms during the rally fleeing unit subphase move during the movement phase? Wait, what? I didn't realise you could move the turn that you rallied. Really? A unit that rallies and reforms during the rally fleeing units subphase move during the movement phase. Wow. 
Wait. Yeah, so in previous editions, this is, I love reading this FAQ. Um, in previous editions, I guess rallying was done in the movement phase. Uh, when was it done? I think it might even have been done at the end of the movement phase. I can't even remember, you know what? Oh, let's look in this book. Because this will answer that question. So this, because this is why I uh, I wouldn't have uh, have spotted it. Movement, yeah. Start of the turn. Hmm. Let's see. Declare charges, rally fleeing troops, compulsory move to move charges remaining. So it was done. It was done after declaring challenges, rallying. Blah 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 blah. blah. Mm, play, they rally. Hmm. If the fleeing troops fail their rally test, yes. If they rally, they remain where they are for the turn. There you go. So previously, so this is sixth edition, um, you couldn't move after you rallied. So I had made the assumption, um, wrongly, clearly, that you couldn't move after rallying. But now you can. That, that is very cool. A unit that rallies and reforms, I assume the reform is just part of the rallying, um, during the rally fleeing unit sub move, sub phase, move during the movement phase. Very good to know. Can you move whilst locked in combat? No. I mean, I don't know why that question's been asked. <laughs> Can you move whilst locked in combat? Uh, okay, a unit can't move, but um, like a character within a unit can move to the fighting rank or something, can't they? Um, but yeah, units can't move. That's weird. Um, uh, it's weird why someone's asked that question. Is a unit's maximum possible charge range the maximum distance from an enemy unit uh, at which it can declare a charge, or the maximum distance it can move when making a charge. Return. What is the unit's maximum possible charge range? The maximum distance, the maximum distance from an enemy unit, at which it can. I'm not quite sure. It is the maximum distance from an enemy unit at which it can declare a charge. Maximum possible charge range. The maximum distance from an enemy unit at which it can declare a charge, or the maximum distance it can move when making a charge. Return. I'm not quite sure. I understand that one, and I. Not sure I feel I need to. Maximum range is just maximum range. Yeah, no, I, I feel like I want to get my head around this. Is a unit's maximum possible charge range the maximum distance from an enemy unit at which it can declare, declare a charge, or the maximum distance it can move when making a charge move? Oh, I see. Is this like the swift stride thing? Uh, where is it? Swift stride gives you uh, three inch extra possible charge range, but you actually get D6 extra. So arguably, let's say you've got a 10 inch charge range for argument's sake, which, oh no, wait, uh, yeah, whatever. Um, you've got an extra three inches rather than an extra possible six inches. I don't know, it was a poor example, but whatever. Okay, fine. So that's that. That's what that question is asking. Um, maximum possible charge range is not the maximum distance you can move, but the maximum distance from an enemy unit. I'm not sure that even clarifies that. Anyway, never mind. When a unit performs a maneuver, can its front edge pass through another unit? No, the only exception to this is when a unit pivots. Oh, and pivots not a maneuver. Interesting. So you can wait. So you can pass through when you pivot, which is weird. Um, but yes, pivot isn't a maneuver. Someone pointed that out to me the other day, um, and they were right. Um, pivot is a, like a just a special move that open order and lumbering units can can make, which is where they they just turn on the spot um, at the end of the move. When a unit wheels, is it acceptable for a rear corner to pass through another unit? Okay, so that's this bit. Yes, provided the unit doesn't end its movement on top of another unit or within an inch of when a unit wheels, those at its rear do not really follow along curving paths. It might appear when moving a large block in, in reality they would under it would take a more direct route following the path of the front rank and resuming the information behind it. I mean, that's cool to have stuff like that to make it more, less rigid, more realistic. Um, I approve of that. Does a unit that has to declare a charge due to being friendly, frenzied or impetuous have to do so if a friendly unit of skirmishers lies between it and a potential charge target obstructing its movement? If there's a chance of the skirmishers moving so they're no longer an obstruction, if they declare a charge, for example, yes. Otherwise, no. <laughs> I 
Don't skirmish this block line of sight. Don't you have to see a unit you want to charge? Just skirmish this block line of sight. I don't know why. I feel like they do. Um, but maybe not. Where are skirmishers? Uh, war machines. I actually can't remember where skirmishers are. Are they before characters? They're after monsters, I think. No, they're not. Maybe they are. Ah, skirmishers, here we go. Line of sight, shooting, you know what, moving through, skirmishes, see if it tells us on here. Um, <coughs> boop, 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 open order, combat order, skirmishes, blah blah blah, blah blah blah. <laughs> Facing the line of sight, uh, they already. Other units can see through units in skirmish formation. If line of sight can be drawn between the individual models, the individual models block line of sight as normal. So you can see, you can see if you're standing here, you can see through that gap. But if you're standing here, you can't see through. You can't see through this unit at all, actually, looking at it. If you're standing here, because they all block line of sight. But if there, they don't block line of sight. Interesting. All right, fine. Skirmishers. <laughs> I was going to say skirmishers do not block line of sight. Individual skirmishers block line of sight. A unit, a skirmishing unit does not block line of sight. Okay, so does a unit... Declared a charge due to being. Does a unit that has to declare a charge? If a friendly unit of skirmishers lies between it and a potential charge target obstructing its movement. This is quite obscure. If there is a chance of the skirmishers moving so they're no longer obstruction, dis obstruction if, then yes. Otherwise, no. I mean, fine, that's the ruling. Um, seems a bit weird because I feel like a frenzied unit has to try and charge anyway. <laughs> I mean, may, it would almost make sense to to use them as the um, the chariot runner kind of rule. But there we go. Um, all, I mean, why? Why couldn't you? Why chariot runners? Draw line of special rule can miss for any years. I mean, I don't know why skirmishers, like why the chariot runner rule isn't just a skirmisher rule and everyone can charge through, chariot, uh, through skirmishers. That'd be cool. And that would stop that being an issue. Anyway, although it cannot make a mar charge move, a unit in marching column can declare a charge. Why is this? Several reasons. Firstly, a drilled unit that declares a charge whilst in marching column can freely redress its ranks to adopt combat ardour after determining its charge range but before moving, thus allowing it to make a charge move. So that makes marching column actually good um, and, and useful. So if you want to, yeah, drilled, or it makes, maybe it makes drilled actually useful. No, it makes it makes marching column useful because um, you can you can put stuff in marching column swiftly march swiftly down the battlefield and then free form and charge into combat um, I don't know if any dwarves do dwarves have drilled because that could be really good for dwarves like moving nine inches a turn instead of six so yeah that's pretty cool um, secondly units that are obliged to declare a charge in certain circumstances wait are there any cavalry that are drilled that could be really cool for cavalry. Just move mega far. Anyway, secondly, units that are obliged to declare a charge in certain circumstances, frenzy defectuous, must do so even whilst in marching column. If they cannot make the charge move, they don't move at all and the charge is fouled. This prevents marching column being used to avoid declaring compulsory charges. Huh? Units that are obliged to declare a charge in certain circumstances must do so even whilst in marching column. Yeah, but if they can't change, if they cannot make the charge move, they don't move at all and charges failed. This prevents marching column being used to avoid declaring compulsory charges. Sure. Oh, wait. Although it cannot make a charge move, but this doesn't, this doesn't say that they can make a charge move. I'm not sure that really clears things up. Units that are obliged to make a charge, friends that are impetuous, must do so even whilst in margin column. Fine, but you can you can declare a charge. If they cannot make the charge move, which they can't because they're in marching column, they don't move at all and the charge has failed. This prevents marching column being used to avoid declaring compulsory charges. I'm not sure that really clears things up. Are they trying to say that if you're frenzied or impetuous and and you have to charge, you charge in your marching column formation and therefore marching column hasn't 
uh, stopped you declaring your compulsory charges. I think that might be what it's saying. And gutted, you're now in the marching column and had made your charge. I'm not sure. I uh, yeah, that I need I need an FAQ on that. <laughs> Uh, alternatively, there might be a psychological advantage to declaring a charge with a marching column. For example, the unit might cause terror, or the charged target might already be fleeing. Of course, it isn't easy to set up situations where such tactics can be used, and therein lies the challenge. Yeah, that's a bit weird as well. So that doesn't feel particularly realistic. We can't charge you, but we're pretending to charge. Ah, be scared. Um, <laughs> I don't know, that's how I read that. Um, if a drilled unit in marching column has to declare a charge due to being frenzied or impetuous, can it choose not wait a drilled unit? Drew, can it choose not to use drilled to redress the ranks and adopt command? If unit is able to redress the ranks, no. So you can't choose not to. A unit that is obliged to charge must endeavour to make use of any special rules that it has in order to charge. The unit must really, the unit just really wants to charge, and it will play this game without you if it has to. I don't know if this has cleared stuff up for me around the frenzy stuff. So wait, is this is this clearing up that? Saying that frenzied and impetuous units will be declaring a charge uh, and if they don't have drilled, they can't make the charge. Uh, and this is saying, but if they do have drilled, you have to make the charge. I think that's probably how I'll read it until I get any different clarification. But I kind of, this one kind of reads more like you're in marching column, you have to charge with frenzied or impetuous. But I don't know. If I want to charge an enemy that, that is a large target with a unit of mine that is in its front arc, but cannot because the enemy unit is already engaged in its front arc, can I instead charge in its flank? No, sometimes charge is impossible. Yeah? I, I'm not quite sure why that's a question. Just because you can see it doesn't mean you can charge it. Yeah, I, fine. Um, when a unit redirects a charge, can it charge a unit that lies beyond its maximal possible charge range? No. Um, if a unit that is arrayed in open order wishes to use the fast cavalry special rule to perform a quick turn, I have not looked at the fast cavalry rules. After marching, can any of the models within the unit move further than twice the movement characteristic? No. It, just tells you in the book. When a unit enters the battle as reinforcements, um, is there a limit to how far onto the battlefield models can be placed? Yes, the units can be considered to have moved onto the battlefield and no model can be placed more than twice its movement characteristic. Yeah, fine. Model use a breath weapon after marching. Yeah, see this? This bugs me. Model cannot shoot during the shooting phase if it marched during the preceding movement phase. And although they work differently to most missile weapons, Breath weapons are a type of missile weapon. I feel like a dragon could be breathing fire, like pelting it towards you. But what do I know? Can a unit that's partially on a hill shoot in two ranks or draw a line of sight across other units that are not themselves on a hill? Only with those models that are on the hill. Yeah, fine. Can a unit on a hill draw a line of sight across and shoot over another unit on the same hill? A unit that's closer to the top of the hill can draw a line of sight. Units cannot draw a line of sight. Yeah. That's fine. You have to be higher. So individual models, basically, that's the outcome of this. Individual models have to be higher than other models who want to shoot over them. Some chariots are equipped with large-scale missile weapons, such as bolt throws. Who shoots the weapons? The crew? <laughs> the beast that draws the chariot or the chariot itself? What a, I feel like that's a dumb question. Missile weapons mounted on chariots are shot by the crew. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, uh, yeah. Now, if they were asking about a hell cannon, who shoots a hell cannon? Is it the crew or the the machine? Well, that's a different question. Um, but that is not the question at hand. Um, yes. Yes, the crew shoot the bolt throwers. Um, okay, fine. But yeah, see, hell, hell cannon. I, I briefly looked at the hell cannon rules, but I didn't see it. I didn't look at anything that might need ballistic skill. Um, can you do indirect fire with a hell cannon? That's the question. Okay, there we go. There's my question. If you use indirect fire with a hell cannon, whose ballistic skill do you use? The hell cannons or the the crew? Um, let's. I'm opening the Ravening Hordes book now. Um, does the hell cannon even have a ballistic skill? Uh, where is it? Do 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 do. 
Oh yeah, you use the okay. That's the answer to that question. Um, you don't need an FAQ for it because the crew do not have a ballistic skill. The uh, the hell cannon does. <laughs> so that's interesting. Interesting that the crew don't have a ballistic skill. But fine, I guess it's to to save the need for an FAQ. There you go. That was quick. Um, combat models in the fighting rank that are killed before they have a chance to fight cannot. Sure, but can a model making a su make a supporting attack? If the model in front of it is slain, yes. If they haven't been killed, you can make a supporting attack. Obviously. In other words, casualties inflicted reduce firstly the number of models in the fighting rank that are able to fight, and secondly the number of models in the supporting rank. I mean, I don't know. That seems obvious to me. It's like, let's say, here we go. Let's take this unit of spearmen. Here's a unit of spearmen. These guys will die. Um, these guys still get to fight because they didn't die. Um, and they have spears. So there we go. That seems that seems obvious to me, but then yeah, there we go. All right. Um, how many attacks can a model with a split split profile make if it's in the fighting rank but not in base contact? I feel like doesn't it say one? A model with a split profile consists of not one model but several sharing the same base. Therefore, each model on that base could make a single attack. Ooh, in the case of a cavalry model, it would be one attack from the rider and one from the mount. Actually, that is good to know. Because I kind of assumed it was just the, the rider. So that means, so, hear me out. <laughs> a dwarf lord on uh, uh, on shield bearers, who for some reason is not in base contact, but is in the fighting rank, means that all of all three of his dudes and the uh, uh, and the, the guy on top get to fight. Oh, okay, here's a better example that you might want to happen, is Battle Pilgrims. Um, the reliquary counts as six models. I think it counts as six models. It gets six attacks. Maybe it doesn't count as six models. Yeah, I'm not sure about that. Um, but yeah, so the 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 king, the king on his, uh, the king on his thing, chariots. Chariots is a, probably a better example. So Kemri units of chariots. Um, yeah, a model with a split profile consists of not one model but several sharing the same base. So. So a chariot, you both your crew and your horses all get to fight. So it's not just one attack from a chariot that's in the fighting rank. So you might as well just take chariots, if, if you can afford chariots, take them really wide. Wait, uh, that. Now, Snotling Pump Wagons have six crew, right? So that means all six crew get to attack. Now they're Snotlings, sure. They're going to do Sodol, but... It's the principle. Just, just play this out, uh, just to see if I'm right. Because I ha, I am planning. Yeah, here we go. Snotling pump wagon. Just for oh, that was not the that arrow was after. This is the arrow was after. Snotling pump wagon. Crew times six. So there we go. So your snotling pump wagon um, can make six weapon skill two strength two attacks. Um, for every pump wagon that hasn't made it in base contact, so you might as well, if you take your six pump wagons, deploy them in a mega line of six, um, and uh, and yeah, get all your attacks in. That's pretty cool. Um, I've got three pump wagons built, two painted, and I've got two unbuilt. And I, you know what? I can make a ramshackle pump wagon. I might try a unit of six pump wagons and see how they go. <laughs> I feel like pump wagons are rubbish compared to snotling bases, though. So I'm not really, um, really expecting them to to do well. But two of my pump wagons are for my blood bowl team anyway. So, but they can they can jump in a, a Warhammer old world fight. Um, okay, what am I looking at now? Dun dun dun. Can a close order unit of just one model claim the close order combat result bonus? Ah, so this is another way of asking the other question, and the answer this time is yes, provided it has a unit strength of five or more. Yeah, as mentioned previously, a close order of unit of just one model is still a close order unit, unit strength five. So yeah, one model, um, but only if it's a big one, or a chariot, I guess, or um, yeah, that big one, that big models. Okay. Oh, what's this? If my unit loses a round of combat and either gives ground or falls back in good order, can it choose to use different weapons? 
in the next turn if the enemy made a follow-up or pursuit move? No. Even though the units separated momentarily, they remain locked in place and engaged in an ongoing combat once the follow-up or pursuit move has been made. In other words, because the combat is ongoing, neither side is able to swap one weapon for another. I feel like that's the same. Ah, did they add one of these? Give grand or full working order. Good order. They probably updated one of these. Um, but yeah, I I feel like the um, the intent of that hasn't hasn't changed. That's uh, that's what I kind of expected it to. It's still the same combat. I guess maybe it's this give uh, the fullback in good order. Kind of feels like it could be a new combat um, because it's like a a runaway and a, a catch up. But they're only they're only falling uh, back d6. It's not like they're doing a 2d6 move, is it? I'm pretty sure it's d6 you fall back. I'm trying to remember now. It doesn't happen very often. Um, but yeah, and sometimes that's even shorter than a, a give ground move because you roll a 1. I feel like that's happened in our game. Um, but yeah, so there we go. It's just the same combat. What happens to a unit that gives ground whilst within 2 inches of the edge of the battlefield? The entire unit is really... Wow. Okay, interesting. Because you um, you can kind of like wheel and, and stuff, maneuver off the battlefield uh, and back on again. But this is, they yeah, you win. <laughs> you win, or they lose. What happens to a unit? The unit loses. Gives ground losses in two inches of the battlefield. Runs away. Fair enough. What happens to a unit that cannot give ground due to the presence of another unit? They're stuck. A uh, unit that wishes to make a pursuit or overrun move. What happens if a unit that wishes to make a pursuit or overrun cannot move due to the presence of other units? Then they can't do it. It may happen it's simply impossible pursuing or overrun a unit to move without having ended up on top of the unit. In such cases, the unit doesn't move, but is considered to have made a, but is considered to have made a pursuit or overrun move. Okay, they tried to chase, but just couldn't. Fine. If a unit completely destroys an enemy in combat and makes an overrun move, can it attempt to reform after moving? Unless it pursued into a fresh enemy, yes. The unit that overruns makes a normal pursuit move, and since this enemy has already been wiped out, it may attempt to reform as if it had run down its foes described on page 129. Cool. Uh, destroys an overrun. Yeah, fine. Okay. If a wizard... So challenges. If a wizard engages in a challenge, knows and uses an assailment spell that can hit multiple enemy models, such as an assailment spell that use a template, are, el are multiple enemy models hit... Or is it only the other participant in the challenge that can be hit? You can only hit the other participant in the challenge, which is fine. Uh, if one participant in challenge causes impact hits or makes a stomp attack, where are they directed against the other person in the challenge? They are getting all of the hits and all of the stomps. <laughs> fine. I mean, be careful what challenge you accept, I guess. Um, or uh, good on you champion for taking just getting completely mangled and mushed into a pulp uh, taking it for the team if one participant is killed in a challenge can other models engaged in the same combat direct their attacks against the survivor during the same combat phase no he was busy uh, yeah what's the answer to that psychology of war i'm trying to i, f I feel like I'm reading it right, you come down here and then you go back up here and you carry on going. Psychology of War. Are units required to make panic tests due to the actions of friendly models? For example, if a wizard miscasts and rolls 2 to 4 on the miscard table, called, causing a dimensional cascade and inflict sufficient casualties on a friendly unit to, to cause it to panic, must it take a panic? Yep. It sounds pretty scary. Units must make a panic test when a nearby friendly unit with a unit strength of 5 or more is destroyed. When is unit strength counted from the start of the turn? The start of the fate. Well, if it's destroyed, then what? Well, the start of, or the point at which the unit is destroyed. Hmm. From the start of the phase during the unit was destroyed. Fine. So start of the phase is where you're counting from. Good to know. That is actually good to know. Universal special rules. Can you choose not to roll for the arrival of ambushes during your start of turn? Nope. You just have to. Um... If a weapon with the armor bane, they just turn up when they turn up. If a weapon with the armor bane, special rule, also has a poison attacks, what happens if a roll of six? You can choose to poison or you can choose armor bane, isn't it? Um, yeah, so it's up to you. Do you want to poison them or do you want to, do you want to hurt them lots? Um, does the Armour Bane X special rule apply to spells cast by a model with the rules, such as assignment spells, magic missiles, and magical vortexes? 
No. It's the... So, the spell has to say that it's got armor vein, right? I think that's what this is saying. Does the armor vein special rule apply to spells cast by model with the rule? Yes, it's not the... So, if the model has armor vein rule, that doesn't apply to the spells. If the spell has armor vein rule, then it applies. Just to clear that up a bit, because that almost looked like spells don't get armor vein, but they do. It's the spells that come with it, not the model. Some mounted models have countercharge special rule, but others don't. Even though the same type of mount is essential, countercharge rule represents skill and frosty with rider. Yeah, so some people can do it, some people can't. Can a drilled unit redress the ranks before giving ground? A unit that gives ground is not a fleeing unit. I, you know what, I need to read the drilled rule again. Um, as mentioned previously, should any part of a unit cross beyond the edge of a battlefield while it's giving ground, the entire unit is removed from play and counts seven being destroyed. It is intentional that a drilled unit might be able to avoid this fate. Ooh, there you go. Redress ranks before giving ground. So yeah, you can change the shape of your unit so you don't get <laughs> don't disappear into oblivion or get disintegrated by the magical wall of the edge of the battlefield that zaps you. Cool, there you go. Good to know if you're if you're into your drilled units. I might have to like drilled sounds like a particularly good ability. I need to pay more attention to units that have it. Do effects that modify a model's movement characteristic also modify how far a model with the Fly X special rule can fly? If a model has Fly X special rule, the number given in brackets is essentially a second movement characteristic. Any effect that modify, modifies one will modify both. Plus, plus or minus. Fine, cool. Is a, is a movement characteristic. <laughs> can a model with two versions of Fly special rule combine both of Fly first? <laughs> No, a model has more than one version of fly. Essentially, there's two movement. Yeah, he's. I assuming the time you get a second version of fly is when you've got a spell cast on you that gives you fly. Uh, if a unit with friends you're impetuous has two movement characteristics, does it have to use the greater when determining if it must declare a charge? If it's able to use the greater, then it must. You may not want to, but <laughs> Lord of Gas and Mighty Dragon doesn't care about your tactics. That's fair enough. If a unit that is subject to Frenzy becomes subject to Frenzy again, no. No no double Frenzied. Um, I feel like there used to be like a Mega Frenzy, and I can't remember what it was. Um, back in 5th edition when I first started, Frenzy did double, Frenzy doubled your attacks. I feel like there was something that got you triple attacks, but I can't remember what it was. Um, can a model with large target special rule draw a line of sight over or through another model? No, because they're big, both big. What happens if a weapon is subject to both ponderous and quick shot? They're, they cancel each other out. Can a character using that's fleeing is running cry? No, <laughs> that would be it for the center of them running away. Can a unit with random movement special rule move around or past an enemy unit? Can a unit with a random movement special rule move around or past an enemy unit? out of one arc and into another before making contact with their unit? No. Whilst units that move randomly do not declare charges, if you wish to move into contact with an enemy unit, it must fulfill the same criteria as any other charging unit during its movement, as detailed on page 126. That sounds... To say that it must fulfill the same criteria sounds... I don't know. Well, let's look, because again, random movement is something close to my heart right now. Um, so let's have a quick look at this. Uh... It must fulfill the same criteria as any other charging unit during its movement. Page 126. Let's look this up and make this a bit bigger just to see what that means. Not that I was running around the sides of units with my random movement. I'm going to say 126. Charge move. Obliged to fulfill certain criteria. A charging unit must endeavor to bring as many models as possible within its front rank into base contact with models in the charged unit. Okay. Unit must move by the shortest route possible to reach the charge target. There you go. Unit must move forward in a straight line. Uh, after moving a unit, that charge must ensure it's aligned again. Yeah, fine. Okay. I can't quibble with those. They are fine. Yeah. If you're charging, or if you're randomly moving into an enemy, it, you're going straight forwards. Um, and uh, yeah, there you go. I'm happy with that. How far does a unit with the random movement special rule move when giving ground? Two inches. Can two regeneration saves be combined together to improve the armor value? What? No, armor values 
given as a target number cannot be combined to lower the target number. As with ward saves, only a single regeneration save can be attempted and different regeneration saves cannot be combined together. If a model has more than one regeneration save, simply use the best. Fine. Uh, yeah, uh, yes. That's that's good clarification. This just, can two regeneration saves be combined together to improve the armor value? Is regeneration an armor value? Fine. <clears throat> Um, if a model with regeneration X plus special rule passes its regeneration save against an attack with multiple wounds X, do I still need to roll the dice if the number of multiple wounds is generated by a dice roll? Yes. Even though the wounds were saved, they still count towards the combat res. Cool. Can a unit that deploys using special scouts make a vanguard? No. That was sad, but there you go. True. Uh, when a unit that does not have stupidity special rule is joined by a character that does, the unit becomes subject to special rule. What happens if the character leaves it? They stop being stupid. Yeah, makes sense. If your unit with the stupidity special rule fails its leadership test, how long is it stupid for? Uh, unit te units test for stupidity in the start of their sub start of turn sub phases unless they're engaged in combat. By extension, a unit that fails its stupidity remains stupidity stupid only until it passes the subsequent test. Yeah, I mean, by this, because stupid units used to lose like half their attacks in combat in previous editions, something like that. But now all stupidity does is means that you wander, for, you can't control them during the movement phase. They wander forwards, their movement. They can't blunder into combat, as I've discovered. So you, you move and you don't get to, yeah, you have to stop an inch away um, from an enemy unit. You don't actually get to fight in combat. Um, so that's, that's different as well, because I'm pretty sure you could blunder into combat previously. Um, but yeah, so stupidity really now is just a movement thing, I think. I don't know. Does it affect shooting? I'm not sure. If a unit of skirmishers succumbs to stupidity, in which direction do they move? They should continue moving in the general direction they moved previous, or if they didn't move in the previous turn, towards the nearest enemy unit. Really? That's a bit of a weird one, but I guess you've got to, you've got to give them a direction. So in lieu of any other... Yeah, I mean, it's a fair question. Which direction do skirmishers move? Um, yeah, same where they were going last turn. Or towards the nearest enemy unit. You've got to, got to give them somewhere to go. So, fine. But it is, surprises me it's towards the nearest enemy unit. Because my, my trolls, when they go stupid, they don't go towards the nearest enemy unit, sadly. Um, swift stride. Or do they? Is that what stupidity does? I don't think so. Swift stride enables a model to move further during a charge move than its maximum possible charge range. Does it? Oh, I see, yes. Because the models with this special rule delight in running their cowards who flee before a charge. Wait. Interesting. Fine, cool. If a character without the Vanguard special rule joins a unit... Uh, yeah, so let me just tell you what went through my head. Um, because you're... To determine whether you catch your opponent is how far... Is the dice roll, right? Rather than how far you move. Is that right? I don't know. Either way, it's fine. Um, if a character without the Vanguard special rule joins a unit... With it during deployment, can the character make a vanguard? No. Uh, will not be able to make a vanguard. However, the unit has skirmish formation, it can make its vanguard move as normal, leaving the character behind. I wasn't expecting that, but fine. Okay. Can a character without the veteran special rule that's joined a unit with the veteran special rule benefit from it when attempting to use a special rule that requires them to make a leadership test? No. Uh, when a character attempts to use a special rule that requires them to make a leadership test, they must use their own leadership characteristic, and unless specifically stated otherwise, can it use any additional special rule? I'm not sure what veteran does. Does that give you... I don't know what veteran does. Uh, I have not needed... Maybe I should look it up. Let's quickly look up veteran. Uh, it's a universal special rule, right? Um, so, universal special rules. Here we go. Veteran. That was... See, I'm getting relatively good at navigating this book now, because that was quite easy to find. Um, veteran, for the majority of the models in units have units in this unit have, a, have this special rule, they may re-roll any lead, failed leech test. Oh, that's good to know. Um, cool. Okay, so veteran lets you re-roll. Is it any any failed leadership test? Wow. Okay, so it's like re-roll panic and stuff. Um, it's a bit like. But like mark of undivided uh but no 
he doesn't get to use their veteran status. Some attacks, are on, uh, some attacks allow a specific model within a unit to be targeted. So this is like the way stalker. Can such an attack be used to break the coherency of unit skirmishes and cause the other models to be removed as well? No. You cannot remove a model from a unit of skirmishes if doing so would cause the unit to lose coherency. However, an attack targets a specific model. The model must be removed. In such cases, simply replace the removed model with another model belonging to the same unit, one that could be removed chemistry. Yeah, fine. Um, when a character takes a chariot as a mount, do they replace one of the crew? No. Interesting. You, so they used to replace one of the crew, didn't they? But yeah, fine, cool. Um, great. A character mounted on a ridden monster or a chariot can choose to use their own or their mount's armor value, whichever is better. If the character is wearing magic armor, but I choose to use the mount's armor value, can I still claim other benefits conferred by the magic armor? No. It does say whichever is better, right? I guess, yeah. Anyway, fine, yeah. If a character mounted on a ridden monster or chariot carries a shield, does that improve the mount's armor value? No. Just, uh, on a ridden monster. Oh, I see. Fine. I was trying to work out, like, when are you attacking? You're never attacking the monster. You're attacking the character. Okay, fine. Yeah, the shield is the... That's his armor save, and you're choosing which armor save to use. If a warband character joins a warband with a rank bonus of one or more, does the modifier to their leadership characteristic increase their command range? Okay, cool. Good to know. Uh, I think the reason I haven't come across that situation yet is because my general has always been the character in the um, the warband unit, and so he just they've got a 12-inch command range, so it hasn't affected it. I assume it doesn't increase. Yeah. That's not what it's saying. Um, if a warband character joins a unit that isn't a warband, does that unit's rank bonus modify their characteristic leadership? No. Cannon don't target enemy models. They target a point on the ground. How does it work when targeting lone characters? Can a cannon be fired in such a way as to hit a lone character that normally be protected? Yes, I can't remember what this said. Purpose of targeting lone is to protect them from shooting, blah, blah, blah. Therefore, in the spirit of rules, unless they're closest, uh, blah, 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 cannot be stopped by cannonball, even if the base lies directly under the path. However, if a lone character's base di lies directly under the strike point of cannonball I hit, I'm not sure. That basically defeats <laughs> what that said there, but whatever. Some magic weapons or special rules allow specific models within a unit to be targeted. Do such attacks ignore lookout sir? No, you can still look out sir. That's good. Um, if a named character is equipped with a mundane weapon, that kind that does really nullify the. Yeah, is that good? I'm not sure that is good now. I'm trying to think. I was thinking if I'm being shot at, I want someone to say look out, sir. But if I'm being sniped at, should someone be able to say look out, sir? No, I don't think so. Right, special rules allow specific models within you do such attacks. Ignore the look out, sir rule. Hmm. Okay. I'm maybe I'm not a fan of that rule actually. Because I feel like I should be able to, um, should be able to snipe characters without them being safe, like champions and stuff, with a sniper rifle. No one's gonna spot you. Anyway, if a named character is equipped with a mundane weapon such as a lance or cavalry spear and a magic weapon, can they choose to use the lance or cavalry spear must see as their magic weapon? They must use their magic weapon. Yeah, pretty standard. Some named characters will carry a backup weapon so they could use when their magic weapons destroyed. That hasn't changed, that's normal. Do special rules conferred by a model's weapon apply to attacks made by the model's mount? No, I think that's what the Berserker Blade thing was trying to say. Maybe. Um, I mean, fine, we'll read it. Any rules conferred by a weapon, be it magical or mundane, apply only to attacks made with that weapon. Um, yeah, I mean, I don't think. Yeah. Let's give another example. What is a special rule unique to its faction that grants additional rules to a hand weapon crew of an orc or chariot? Lies only to the riders. Yeah, I mean, that's... that's. I feel like that's obvious, but there we go. Some monsters have weapon with notes that state they must make or may choose to make one attack or one additional attack with that kind of weapon. Can they make more than one attack with that weapon? No, because it says they can 
They may choose to make one attack or one additional attack. So why would they make more? No, <clears throat> it's because they're like um, a manticore with its poison tail. And the reason it's got however many attacks it does is because one of it is its poison tail. Can a model armed with two hand weapons choose to fight with just one hand weapon? Yes, because sometimes it's better. I'm not sure how often it is, but yes. Um, yeah. When can a model use a lance during any turn which it charged or counts as having charged? Okay, that's good for follow up rules. Uh, can a missile weapon be used in combat? That is actually very cool. If you can make people run away, uh, like fall back in good order, because you cannot charge if you if they fall back in good order. Uh, I think. Yeah, pretty sure. Can a missile weapon be used in combat? I mean, pistols can, right? It says no. So obviously the answer is no. But I'm still going to look it up anyway. <laughs> uh, I felt like pistols could be used in combat. Yeah, but it literally says it can. <laughs> but, um... Uh. Pistol, ranged or combat? Uh, brace of pistols are two profiles representing how the weapons are used in combat. And it's definitely in the missile weapons section. <laughs> but whatever. Um, I think the I think the point is you can't use your longbow in combat. Um, but yeah, I mean, they definitely should have called that out. I feel like that's a, uh, an oversight. No, unless it's a brace of pistols. Is that, I feel like it's only brace of pistols that has that. Yeah, <laughs> I reckon I reckon that is going to turn blue next time and say, unless it's a brace of pistols. Um, okay, war machines. Can a cannon target a point on the ground if woods or hill lies between it? No, you can't shoot over hills, uh, even if it's on a hill. Well, that's interesting. You can't shoot over another hill. You're on a hill. You're on a hill here. There's a hill here. So my hand with my, my cannon on my hand hill over here couldn't shoot the mouse over here because there's another hill in the way. So yeah, there we go. Fine. Um, and same for woods. Can a cannon target a point on the ground if another unit lies between it and that point? No, unless you're on a hill. Can a cannon be shot in such a way as to hit an enemy unit that is engaged in combat with a friendly unit? Ooh. Cannot shoot at enemy units that are engaged in combat. On page 143, now this is interesting. 143, because I want to know what it says about stuff. Um, you can't intentionally shoot into combat. Fine. But can you accidentally, like, I don't know, foot of gork on a unit in combat, or um, fanatic unit in combat? Oddball stuff. Mm -hmm. Shooting into combat. Except in rare cases, units cannot shoot at enemy units that are engaged in combat. Yep. Oh, that actually doesn't help me. If any of the... No. Ah, disappointing. Um... Yeah, so what about a magical vortex that kind of hits a part of a unit? Does it just get the unit that hits? What about a fanatic that barrels into to combat through an enemy unit? Does it get any of your own guys? I couldn't find a um, couldn't find any rules for that. So if anybody knows, please write them in the, the comments and, and let me know. Um, in the case of cannon, target point can't be placed in such a way as to risk the cannibal hitting a friendly unit. So you just can't risk hitting your own guys. When a war machine shoot, use the ballistic skill of a character to join it? No, because a war machine is crew are treated a single model. You must use the crew's ballistic skill. That's interesting. Can a war machine shoot using this skill? I thought that was the whole point of a character joining a um, war machine. I guess maybe it, the character has a special rule that says it can. Maybe that's what it is. Um, okay. Warhammer armies. Ooh, here we go. Wait, is this answering my question? I'm not sure it is. Oh, it might be. Let's have a look. If my opponent and a guy have agreed to play a 2,000 points game, but my army's not exactly 2,000 points, it's 1,997. Can I take two of something limited to 0 to 1 per 1,000 points? <clears throat> yes, such limitations are based on the size of the game you're playing rather than the exact points value of your army. It uh, doesn't quite cover it. Yeah, I'm not really sure. Um... No, that doesn't actually answer my question. So my question is, um, can I take... So it's 0 to 1 per 1,000 points. 
Okay, so in a 500, is a 500 point army within your first thousand points? And so you can take one goblin bolt throw, for example. Can I take one goblin bolt throw in a 500 point army because that's within the first thousand points? Um, that's the question I have, basically. Um, so that's not answered there. Does an allied contingent have to abide by the restrictions given in the army composition list it's drawn from? Yes, an allied contingent is a small army within a large army. Good to know. Uh, Mage using a grand army or army of infamy within a 2,000 points army. For example, an allied contingent of 500 points would have to spend at least 125 points on core, could spend no more than 250 on characters, and it would it would be, oh, there we go, unable to include any units limited to 0 to 1 per 1,000 points. That answers my question and makes me sad. Unable to include any units limited to 0 to 1 per 1,000 points. Well, there we are. Um, fine. I probably still will take like a cannon in a 500 point game because I'm only playing those with people I know and they're happy to do the same. But good to know. I don't think it matters for tournaments because I don't think any tournaments are like 500 point games. So uh, it's basically irrelevant at sub 1000 points anyway, I think. Um, but there you go, just a heads up. In, uh, in any battle reports I do that are less than 1000 points, we're still going to be taking these. <laughs> like, <laughs> I've got no problem taking a bolt throw in 500 points. Anyway, that's that's your heads up. Um, but good, at least I know the official answer. Um, I'll have to remember that for when I'm playing anywhere that it matters. Uh, okay, Warhammer Battles. The rulebook lists the minimum size of battlefield as 30 by 44 for games of up to 1,000 points. These are recommended sizes. The normal size battlefield for a game between two and 3,000 points is a 4 foot by 6 foot board. Players encouraged to use this. Minimum sizes are based on the folding card battlefields. These are ideal ones facing minimum. Basically, play whatever size you want. Um, uh, for example, 44 by 60 for 1,000 rather than 48 by 48. Yeah, play whatever. Basically, play whatever size you want. Law of Magic. Uh, if a unit upon which Earth and Ramparts has been cast is obliged to declare a charge, if the unit is frenzied or impetuous, for example, must it do so? If so, can it make a charge move? Earth and Ramparts does not prevent a unit from declaring a charge. It prevents it from charging. <laughs> really? In other words, yes, the unit must declare a charge. However, because you can't, it cannot charge. It doesn't move at all, and charge is failed. So this comes back to the: we're going to pretend we're charging at you to scare you and make you run away. Yeah. Well, fine. Whatever. That's the only only reason I can think why you'd want to do that. Can a unit upon which Earth and Rambos has been carved make a counter charge? Um, can the spell Spectral Doppelganger from the Law of Illusion be cast with a magic weapon that allows the wielder to make only a single attack? No, weapons limited to a single attack can only afflict a single hit. Can a spell Spectral Doppelganger from the Law of Illusion be used with a magic weapon that allows the wielder to make only a single attack? Interesting. Okay, fine. There we go. Um, can the wearer of the Wizarding Hat cast spells or wearing armor? Yes, the wearer of the wizarding hat is not actually a wizard. Their magical powers are granted by a haunted hat, which is not affected by any armor the model may wear. The hat's cast in the spells. There you go. Wearer of the wizarding hat also wear a magic helmet, such as the Tazzling Helm. One's enchanting, one's magic armor. Sure, so you better put your hat on your helm. Scroll of Transmogrification is successfully used against a wizard mounted on a wizard monster. What happens to the mount? The wizard is trying to fight, but not their mount. You would be left with a frog riding a dragon. I mean, that's... That's cool, because they could have said the dragon turns into a frog and they just are one combined model, but that's cool. Some models can be found in one faction's army list, but can be included in an army made using a composition list belonging to a different faction, Dragon Ogre Shagos, for example. Uh, what list of magic items do they have model next to? Isn't it, I haven't read this, but isn't it just going to say whatever list they were chosen as part of? So if you chose a Dragon Ogre Shagoth in a Warriors of Chaos, then you get that list. Models can be purchased as magic items from the list of common magic items or from their own faction's list of magic items. A dragon over the Shagoth. Okay, so it's not what. So, yeah, it says not not the thing that I thought it was going to say. Dragon over the Shagoth can purchase items from common or beastmen. Okay, fine, good to know. Unusual situations. One of the old world's complex game. Oh, this, is, this hasn't changed. Complex, but we'll read it anyway. The old world is a complex game of manoeuvre and counter-manoeuvre between tightly formed battle lines of densely packed infantry and cavalry. 
It is to be expected that unusual situations will arise when units get in one another's way, interfering with movement, shooting, combat and so forth. To deal with this, we encourage players to resolve uncertainties in a way that keeps the game flowing or to seek the opinion of impartial third party. At an organised event where such situations can take on greater significance, this is the role of the event organiser or the umpires and players should always defer to the ruling of such an official. It is right and honourable. Only the most dastardly rapscallion would argue with such an exemplar of the hobby. If such resolution is impossible, the simplest solution is to rule that the unit cannot do the thing, by which we mean it cannot make the move, cannot take the shot, and so forth, as stated on page 93 of the rulebook. What matters more than any rule is that players enjoy the game and that rivalries remain friendly. All right, well, that took a lot longer than I expected. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to end the, the video here and I'll do a separate one on the um, the other FAQs. But that was really interesting. There, uh, there were certainly a few things, like this random movement one, that was very good to know. I don't have to move uh, the full distance. It's just the maximum movement. So there's a few few good things in here. Chariots, like every everything, uh, like all of the crew on a chariot model and, and the, um, the mounts being able to make attacks, even if they're not in base contact because they each model gets one attack those kind of things very good to good to know i will have to um pay more attention to, to drilled units because they look particularly good um so yeah very very cool uh good to good to get some um uh, official rulings and i am disappointed about the naught to one thing um because that doesn't make as much sense uh as i was hoping it would be but there we go whatever cool all right well hopefully that was interesting that was certainly interesting for me um and uh thanks for watching and uh catch you in the next video